welcome again to this particular session. So in this particular session, we shall have discussion with respect to what we call interest suspense method. Now, what is this interest suspense method and what is this cash price method of accounting? Honestly speaking, whatever questions so far, either to till up to this particular time, which we have had done so far, all the questions which we did were on the basis of cash price method of accounting. So I will solve this question on the basis of interest suspense method just to orient you how we have to actually do the accounting under interest suspense method in case if the question asks us to do so. Although chances are very slim that anything could be asked from interest suspense method because generally it is never ever given in the question that you have to solve the question on the basis of interest suspense method. But in case, in case, if it is asked, you should be aware of it. Question is not tough. On 1st of January 2019, Mrs. H500 acquired a pickup van and it purchased it from Mrs. W900 and the terms were cash price of the van is 1 lakh. 40,000 were to be paid on signing the contract. The balance, after paying 40,000, the balance will be 60,000. Question says that balance was to be paid in annual installment of 20,000. Because balance is 60,000 and 20,000 the installment, so three installment will have to be paid, but plus interest. That means the installment which was given to us is pure installment. It is not inclusive of interest, so we will have to find out interest, add to it to find out the gross interest. Interest chargeable is 600 and depreciation is 10% per annum is to be written off using the straight line method. First of all, I have solved this question on cash price system basis, which we have already done, correct? However, now I'm telling you how we have to solve the question through interest suspense method. So in order to solve the question through interest suspense method, just pay attention in what we are supposed to do, correct? So let's have a look over here. I will solve this question on interest suspense method basis, correct? So this is what we are supposed to learn in this particular session, interest suspense method. It has never been asked, but still, interest suspense method. As far as interest suspense method is concerned, here what we are supposed to do. Now in order to solve this particular question 4.1, in fact, we are solving 4.2 because 4.1 is on cash price system basis and the same question now we are solving it, correct, as interest suspense method basis. So even in this particular system, first of all, I will have to find out the interest, calc uh, interest elements and for that I will have to do the interest calculations. So interest computation, which you can do so very easily, interest computation. So first of all, you are going to write here cash price as usual. After writing the cash price, you will write gross installment, gross installment. And then interest element and then finally cash price portion. First of all, we shall write over here cash price, which in this question given to us is equal to 1 lakh, correct? Cash price is 1 lakh. First of all, at the in the beginning of the first year, we are going to make the down payment. The down payment is 40,000 in this particular question. And we know that as far as down payment is concerned, no interest element is there. Entire payment is for cash price portion. So your down payment itself is considered as gross installment. Now we are left up with balance of 60,000. Now we will reach the end of the first year. At the end of the first year, obviously we are going to pay the first installment, but we are not having the gross installment. So first of all, I am going to compute the interest. Interest is 6%. I am going to apply 6% of 60,000, which happens to be 3,600. 3,600. So my gross installment will be equal to 23,600. 20,000 plus interest 3,600. Cash price portion will be 20,000. I will subtract the cash price portion which is equal to 20,000. Now we are left up with 40,000. Now we will come to the end of the second year. Second year end. 
At the end of the second year, again, first of all, I am going to compute the interest at the rate of 6% of 40,000, which happens to be 2,400. So my gross installment will be 20,000 plus 2,400, 22,400. Isn't it or not? And your cash price portion will be equal to 20,000. We will subtract 20,000 from 40,000 to get the balance amount, which is 20,000. Now we come to the end of the third year. Third year end. At the end of the third year, again, first of all, I am going to compute the interest 1,200. Then I will add 20,000 plus 1,200 to get gross installment 21,200. Cash price portion will be 20,000. Subtract the cash price portion and your interest calculation is over. Now we shall prepare the ledger accounts. Under interest suspense system, how ledgers are prepared ledger accounts in order to prepare the ledger accounts as usual first of all we are going to prepare the hire vendor account correct hire vendor account and there is hardly any difference there is hardly any difference hire vendor account first let me start with this hire vendor As usual, first of all, the day on which we are going to buy the asset, that is in the beginning of the first year, first year, beginning. This time we have purchased pick up vans, that means asset is vans, and the cash price for the seller and cost price for the hire purchaser is 1 lakh, correct? And then we are going to make the down payment on the same date first year beginning we, we will write here to bank account down payment down payment is 40,000 till up to this stage there is no difference correct similarly we will reach the end of the first year at the end of the first year generally we write here by interest but here under interest suspense method instead of writing interest you will write interest suspense account you write interest suspense account. Is it clear to you? And you will write the total interest. Total interest means your total interest is 3,600 plus 2,400 and plus 1,200. Total interest you are going to credit in the very first year itself. That is the only difference. In the normal accounting process, which we were following so far till up to this particular stage, we were writing by interest and interest for the first year is 3600 if i would be following the normal procedure i would have written here 3600 but however under interest suspense method as i told you interest of all the three installment correct total interest you will write and you will write by interest suspense account interest suspense account correct now you will reach the end of the first year you will write here to bank your first installment, now first installment which we computed here is actually 23,600. So you will write here 23,600. So 23,600 I am going to write here. And then we are going to take up the balance. Now what will be the balance now? The balance will be 43,600. Balance will be 43,600. So this much amount is still due to the higher vendor. Correct. And now we will come to the beginning of the second year. Second year, beginning. In the beginning we shall write by balance brought down 43,600. In normal accounting process, also known as cash price system, we generally reach the end of the second year and we write interest. But here, because interest of all the three years has already been credited, now there is no point in writing the interest again. So we are not going to do at the end of second year towards the credit side anything under interest suspense method, correct? So all we have to do now at the end of the second year is to make the payment. So at the end of the second year, we will make the payment, second installment, and second installment which we computed earlier 
is 22,400. So we will make the payment 22,400. And then we will simply balance it. Balance carried down. Balance carried down shows that at the end of the second year, this much amount you are still supposed to pay to the higher vendor. So your second year task is also over. Now you come to the end of the third year. First you will reach the beginning and then you will come to the end of the third year. So in the beginning of the third year, third year, beginning, you are going to write here, first of all, balance brought down. Balance brought down happens to be how much? 21,200. No point in writing any interest. Now, third year end. At the end of the third year, all you have to do is to make the payment to bank. That is your third installment. 21,200. So this way round, your higher vendor account will get tally. Is it clear to you? Now, whenever question, in case if it would be asked, I have already told you, never ever it has been asked from interest suspense method but still if it is asked you should be aware of how to prepare so in case if the questioner would ask you to solve the question by applying interest suspense method not only in the books of purchaser you prepare higher vendor account you are also supposed to prepare in that case interest suspense account also you will prepare interest suspense account also correct since you have written in the first year in the higher vendor account towards the credit side at the end 7200 you have written over here so towards the debit side of interest suspense account you are going to write at the end of the first year to higher vendor account that is 7200 now that means in the first year you haven't recognized any interest because you have credited the entire interest to interest suspense account correct so now after having credited it to interest suspense account now slowly and steadily every year you are going to recognize the interest so you will come over to the credit side at the end of the first year and you will write here by interest account that means out of 7200 now you are recognizing first year interest that is 3600 and so on. Now you will simply balance it and the balance carried down will also be 3600, correct? Similarly, now you will come to the end uh, beginning of the second year. In the second year beginning, obviously you are going to write balance brought down. Balance brought down is equal to 3600 and then you are going to write at the end of the second year. In the At the end of the second year, you are going to recognize interest related to second year. Now, interest of second year is 2,400. So, now you have recognized it. Balance carried down is 1,200. And so on. This is how you are going to prepare this particular account. Similarly, third year, beginning. Balance brought down. 1200 you will reach the end of the first year and at the end of the first year sorry third year you are going to recognize the interest related to the third year correct interest of the third year is 1200 not only this questioner will also ask you to prepare interest account also now preparation of interest there is hardly anything which you need to do very small account interest suspense account correct so you will prepare the interest account when you will prepare the interest account in interest suspense account towards the credit side you have written by interest so first of all you will come over to the debit side and in the first year, you will write at the end to interest suspense account. Interest suspense account. Now, first year's interest is 3600. Correct? Now, this interest, because you have recognized the first year interest, you will credit it to profit and loss account. So, first year end, now you will credit it to profit and loss account. That means after pulling out from 7,200, 
3600 worth of interest now you are going to actually transfer it to profit and loss account 3600 this is the theme of this account so no balance will be there in this account no balance will be there now you will reach the second year in the second year end again you will write here by interest suspense account interest suspense account and second year interest is 2400 so you have plucked out out of 7200 interest of second year that is 7200 correct so now after plucking it out you are transferring it to profit and loss account so you will come to the second year end again and transfer the amount to profit and loss account 2400 Similarly, third year end. Once again, you are going to write here interest suspense account. 1,200. And now, you will transfer it to profit and loss account. There is hardly anything to do. 1,200. So, this account will get closed. And besides that, you will prepare the asset account that is when account in usual manner as you used to prepare correct asset account or when account in this particular case first of all you will write in the first year beginning to higher vendor account you purchase the asset for one lakh now you are going to charge the depreciation at the end of the first year at the end of the first year, the depreciation is at the rate of 10% and it is on a straight line method basis 10,000. Balance carried down 90,000. So, when account will be prepared in usual manner as we were preparing so far. Second year. Now, we will come to the second year. In the second year, of course, beginning. We will write two balance brought down. Now, as far as balance is concerned, that is 90,000. And then you are going to reach the second year end. At the second year end, you are going to write by depreciation. Once again, you are going to write 10,000 because this time depreciation is on a straight line method basis. 80,000. And likewise, in the third year, beginning, two balance brought down, that is 80,000. Third year end, by depreciation, 10,000, and balance carried down, 70,000. Is it clear to you? So, you have to know a little bit about interest suspense method also. So, in case if the question asks you, then you should have a bit of idea regarding that. Otherwise, chances are very less anything to be asked from this particular method. Honestly speaking, this chapter is already over. But just to be on the safer side, I am doing this. And similarly, there is yet another section here. And this is your final section. That is section 5 actually, it is printed as section 6, actually it is section 5. Installment system, correct? Installment system, what is the installment system and what we are supposed to do under it? Just have a look over here. A firm acquired two tractors, two tractors have been acquired under higher purchase agreements, details of which are as follows. We have acquired tractor A. And tractor A has been acquired on 1st of April 2021 and the cash price of tractor A is 14,000. Likewise, tractor B has been acquired. It has been acquired on 1st of October 2021. The first truck was acquired on 1st of April. It was acquired on 1st of October for 19,000. Correct? Further, it is stated in the question that both agreements provided for payment to be made in 24 monthly installment. We have to pay 24 installments for both the items. Both the items means for tractor A also 24 installments and for tractor B also for 
24 installments. However, 24 installments and these are monthly installments, not yearly installments, monthly installments. 600 each for tractor A and 800 each for tractor B. That means into 600 and into 800. This is the total amount which you are supposed to pay. This is your higher purchase price or installment price, whatever you may like to say. And we will start paying. Question says that commencing on the last day of the month following the purchase. Suppose if I have purchased tractor A, let us say in the month of April. In the month of April, I have purchased, supposed. Then the month following the purchase will be May. And at the end of the May, we will pay the first installment. Is it clear to you? This is what is stated over here. Commencing on the last day of the month following the purchase, all the installments paid on due dates. Although it, it is not going to have any impact on the solution of the question. But just to make the point clear, on 30th of June 2022, tractor B was completely destroyed by fire. So next year, because we bought it on 21, so next year on 30th of June, tractor B was completely destroyed. And in full settlement on 10th of July 2022, an insurance company paid 15,000 under a comprehensive policy. So we might have secured this particular asset by way of an insurance policy. So by way of an insurance. So we got insurance claim of rupees 15,000 on 10th of July. 2022 although the truck got destroyed on 30th of June 2022 any balance on higher purchase company's account in respect of these transaction was to be written off what does it mean I would let you know in a short while the firm prepared accounts annually on 31st of December so accounting year is ending on 31st of December and provided depreciation on tractors on a straight line basis at the rate of 20 percent per annum and depreciation rate is 20% per annum rounded off to nearest of rupee 10. Apportioned as from the date of purchase and up to the date of sale. It means suppose we have purchased tractor A on 1st of April. So we are going to provide depreciation on it till the date of the disposal. Correct? That is the point here. You are required to record this transaction in the following accounts. You, we have to prepare a tractor on higher purchase account, provision for depreciation of tractor's account and disposal of tractor's account. Actually, generally when such questions will be asked, only these three accounts will be prepared. Now, if you will look closely into the preparation of the accounts, you will suddenly feel as if this question is hardly from higher purchase, this question as if related to depreciation calculation. Isn't it or not? So, I will do this question for you and with that we will come to the end of this particular chapter. Correct? However, for the first three sections are very important. Now, this is your section 5 in fact. Section 5. And question number 5.1. In this particular question, first of all, let me do the analysis of the question so that it becomes easy for you to comprehend and understand. Now, first year is starting on 1st of January and obviously it will finish off on 31st of December. Correct? So, 31st of December. 2021 and accounting year will start from 1 1 2021 however we purchased on 1 4 2021 tractor a tractor a has been purchased correct and the purchase price if i am not wrong is 14000 rupees cash price correct similarly in this particular question we purchased another tractor but this time tractor B has been purchased on 1st of October 2021 and its cash price is 19,000. As is given in the question for this particular asset, 
we are supposed to pay 24 monthly installments of rupees 600 each and while for the second one we are supposed to pay 800 installments sorry 24 installment of rupees 800 each this is the question further rate of depreciation 20 percent is also given no interest etc have been given to us and moreover we are not concerned with that now in this particular question the most important part is given that in the next year that mean in the next year which will start from 1 1 2022 on 30th of june it is given to us on 30th of june 2022 tractor b t b tractor b it got destroyed and further it was given to us in the question that on 10th of july 2022 insurance company gave us a claim of rupees 15000 Correct. This is the question and you are supposed to prepare in this particular question as is given. Mm -hmm. As is given in this particular question, one, as far as ledgers are concerned, one, you are supposed to prepare a tractor on higher purchase account. Tractor on higher purchase account. Besides that, you are supposed to prepare provision for depreciation account so first let me actually draw the formations for this one to make you understand i will consume a bit of space tractor on higher purchase besides that i will have to prepare provision for depreciation and there is one more account which is asked in the question disposal account so these three accounts which are supposed to prepare if you remember actually you might be having a bit of feeling that we are quite acclimatized to these accounts yes you have done it lots of time under ch chapter depreciation asset disposal account i am simply writing disposal account and then provision for depreciation account provision for depreciation account and then tractor on higher purchase account these are the three accounts which we are supposed to prepare now in order to prepare the tractor on higher purchase account just think of what we call chapter depreciation correct over there you used to purchase a machinery or any asset you used to prepare asset account similarly we are we are preparing nothing but a sort of asset account correct so first of all while doing the depreciation what you used to do in the asset account you used to write to bank for various assets which you acquired similarly here in this particular question on 1 4 2019 i will write here 1 4 2019 sorry 1 4 2021 correct we acquired tractor a so i will write here to bank and I will write here tractor A. Tractor A. Now T A means tractor A. Correct? And tractor A which we have acquired, acquired for 14,000. Similarly, on 110, 2021, 1st of October, once again, we purchased another tractor. Tractor B. And this time we purchased it for 19,000. Now you have to understand one thing. Whenever an entity prepares provision for depreciation account, it means depreciation is not credited to the asset account. Generally, we write depreciation towards the credit side of the asset. But if we are preparing provision for depreciation account, then whatever depreciation related to these assets for the current year will be that will be written in provision for depreciation account that means asset account is being prepared at cost so whenever provision for depreciation account is prepared separately it means asset is being reflected at cost so in the current year no more transactions are there so i will simply close it and by the end of the first year 31st of 12 2021 i'm simply gonna write balance carried down I can write a straight away 33,000 
or you can show it separately. Balance carried down of tractor A is 14,000 and of tractor B is 19,000. It is not necessary. You can straight away write 13,000. Now, obviously, these are balance carried down. So, next year, which will begin on 1 1 2022, I will write here balance brought down and I will write tractor A. As far as tractor A is concerned, I will write 14,000. Then I will write tractor B, that is 19,000. Correct? Now, first of all, let me do the what we call treatment of depreciation in provision for depreciation account. I have already told you, whenever we prepare provision for depreciation, because generally when we provide depreciation, our entry is depreciation to asset account, generally. However, if we are preparing dep what we call provision for depreciation account, instead of crediting it to asset account, we will credit the depreciation to provision for depreciation account. So, at the end of the first year, on 31st of 12, 2021, I will provide the depreciation. You can write depreciation or you can simply write by profit and loss account. Why? Because ultimately depreciation will be debited to profit and loss account. You can write in bracket depreciation. Now, you will provide depreciation on tractor A. Now, pay attention. When you purchased, when did you actually purchase the uh, tractor A? You purchased tractor A on 1-4-2021. That means you have to provide depreciation on tractor A from 1-4-2021 till 31st of 12, 2021. That means for 9 months. Similarly, this item has been purchased on 1-10-2021. So, you are going to provide depreciation on tractor B from 1-10-2021 till 31st of 12, 2021. That means for 3 months. Correct? So, we will provide the depreciation now. In order to provide the depreciation, first of all, I will write tractor A. Now, the cost price of tractor A is 14 for the purchaser. So, we will provide depreciation on it 20% at the rate of 20%. And I told you only for 9 months. Correct? 14,000 into 20% into 9 by 12. That will be equal to 2,100. Similarly, tractor B. Cost of tractor B is 19,000. 19,000 into 20% and into 9 by 12. Sorry, into 3 by 12, not 9 by 12, because 3 months depreciation we have to provide on tractor B. So that will be equal to 900. So total depreciation 3000 we provided in the first year. So, now I will close this account. 31st of 12, 2021. Balance carried down. I can write straight away 3000 or I can show it separately that on tractor A, balance as far as depreciation is concerned, 2100 and tractor B is concerned. So far, we have provided 900 worth of depreciation. Correct? Now you are going to simply pull these balances to the credit side. Next year, 1 1 2022, you will write balance brought down. As far as balance brought down is concerned, tractor A is 2100 and tractor B is 900. Correct? This much depreciation. Now, First of all, what we will do, we will come back to tractor account. Now, you might be wondering that we didn't do anything with respect to disposal account in the first year. Quite obviously, no disposal took place in the first year. So, unless and until disposal will take place, disposal account will not get affected. Now, coming over to tractor account, you must understand that whenever we are preparing provision for depreciation separately, it means tractor is being or asset is being reflected at cost. Now, what happened in second year? In second year, one item, tractor B, got destroyed. So, first of all, I will come to the credit side. I will write the date, 30th of June, 2022. I will write here, by tractor B. Because tractor B is no more with us. So, we have to wipe out the balance of tractor B from this particular account. 
is it clear to you so that means from this account we will have to pull out the cost of tractor b now cost of tractor b or you can say balance of tractor b is 19000 so i will write it towards the credit side that mean now from tractor account i am releasing the balance of tractor b now we are left off with only tractor a so this account must reflect the balance of tractor a and of course at cost so first of all you will write here by tractor b but you should not write only tractor b instead what you are going to write this is just for the understanding now what you are going to write actually instead you better write here by tractor disposal account or simply disposal account correct that means this particular tractor is disposed of thrown out it means disposal account you can write in bracket tractor b so that when as far as this account is concerned nothing more to be done in this particular account because this account is at cost you cannot write depreciation in it so when you will reach the end of the accounting year 31st of 12 2022 you will simply write balance carried down and because you are having only one truck left with you so this balance carried down is related to tractor a and the balance will be 14000 the balance in this account will appear at cost price because depreciation is not being credited to this particular account is it clear to you now you have written on 30th of june 2022 here disposal account so quite obviously what you are going to do first of all you will come over to the disposal account on the debit side of disposal account you will write on 30th of june 2022 correct tractor account tractor on hire purchase account or simply tractor account if you want to write tractor on hire purchase account and this is basically cost of tractor b that is 19000 correct now you will come over to provision for depreciation account in provision for depreciation first of all on 30th of june 2022 because tractor b was with you till 30th of june 2022 so for this particular period from 1st of january 2022 till 30th of june 2022 you are supposed to provide depreciation on this particular account isn't it or not so compute the amount of depreciation so i will write here by profit and loss account it means depreciation on tractor b depreciation on tractor b so on tractor b depreciation for the six months period so you will have to compute the depreciation for the six months period what will be the depreciation 19000 depreciation is on a straight line basis method into 20 percent and into 6 by 12 so you will provide the depreciation for six months is it clear to you and depreciation will be equal to 1900 depreciation will be equal to 1900 if depreciation for six months is coming to 1900 that means this depreciation on tractor b should be 950 we have written 900 no problem we will rectify it and so depreciation in the first year on tractor b will be 950 950 no problem correct so this is the situation now in the second year first of all you are going to provide depreciation on tractor uh, tractor b now the point is that if tractor b is no more with you because on 30th of june 2022 it got destroyed if this tractor is no more with you so quite obviously the depreciation which you have provided on this tractor till up to 30th of June 2022 should also move out from provision for depreciation account because provision for depreciation account should reflect now only the depreciation being provided on tractor A because tractor B is no more with you. So in order to pull out the total depreciation which you have provided so far on tractor B in now you will come over to the debit side and on debit side you will write on 30th of june 2022 you will write disposal account that means 
you will transfer the total depreciation provided on tractor B to the disposal account. Now, total depreciation provided on tractor B is actually in the first year you provided depreciation of 950 and in second year you provided a depreciation of 1900. So, total depreciation which you have provided on tractor B is equal to this much. If I am going to add this much, it will be equal to 2850. It will be equal to 2850. Now you have, I hope you are also getting the logic also. Because you must have seen from the asset account first you disposed of what we call tractor B. So in tractor account only tractor A is left. Similarly provision for depreciation account should reflect at the end of the current year total depreciation being provided on what we call tractor A. So that is why total depreciation which you provided so far on till up to 30th of June 2022. Now you, uh, you are simply what we call moving it out or throwing it out from this particular account. You can say in that, in that way round. So 2850. So I have written here 2850. Now we will come over to the credit side. We will cross it 30th of June 2022. I will write here by provision for depreciation account. Provision for depreciation account. Now you can understand it also in a better manner. Because this is the cost price of tractor B. Isn't it or not? This is the cost price, 19,000. And total depreciation provided on it is this much till the date of what we call disposal. So that means this is the book value. So disposal account now is showing the book value of the asset. Is it clear to you or not? First, let me finish provision for depreciation account. Now, on 31st of 12, 2022, we will provide depreciation. I will write here by profit or loss account. It means depreciation on depreciation on tractor B, tractor A, sorry, because only tractor A is left. Now, cost of tractor A is 14,000 and 20% was the depreciation. And for full year, this time we will have to provide the depreciation. So, 2,800 depreciation you are going to provide. Is it clear to you? So, that means when I am going to close this particular account, Ultimately, the balance in this account will be 31st of 12, 2022. The balance carried down will be 2,800. And this 2,800 basically shows the depreciation balance on depreciation balance on tractor A. Because you are left up with only tractor A. So this is your balancing figure. So, provision for depreciation account is showing what we call your depreciation uh, on tractor A. Now, we will have to finish off disposal account. If I will subtract 2850 from 19,000, correct? I will left off with some value. This shows the book value. So, book value on the date of disposal, you can say is this much. Now, on this particular date, that is in fact, 10th of July 2022. I will write here by insurance claim because insurance company admitted a claim of 15,000. So that means against this asset, we are receiving 15,000. But still we are having a loss because 19,000 minus 2850 will be equal to let me check it out. 19,000 minus 2850 is equal to 16,150. That means the book value is 16,150 and we are receiving against the same 15,000. So ultimately there will be a loss and at the end of the year, sorry, on this date, I will transfer the loss and the loss will be equal to 1150. Is it clear to you or not? This is how you are going to prepare this particular account. So sometime when questions come from installment method, they ask you to actually prepare these things. But to be very honest with you, seldom ever question has been ever asked from this particular topic. Is it clear to you or not? But just to be on the safer side, 
we did now let me also make it clear if you are old course student you are supposed to do only till up to section 5 actually this is written section 6 it is section 5 correct if you happen to be a new course student then still you are supposed to do we have written it section 7 actually it is section 6 or you leave it as it is section 7 only correct because otherwise i will have to change the numbering of the question so leave it as 7 16 there is no section 5 you can say in this particular question correct this is section 5 and there is no section 6 you can say so higher purchase trading and data system correct this system is only this particular uh, part is only for new course student because in the new syllabus they have reintroduced higher purchase trading and data system so we will do this also but if you are old course student you will have to do only till up to this particular point of time this this particular stage and but first three sections are wider and even for new course student to be very honest hardly some questions two three questions have been of this particular topic have been uh, this particular topic has been added so we will do higher purchase trading and data system in the next session so till then is goodbye